Welcome inside episode 621 of the Locked On Senators Podcast. I'm Ross Levitan on the outskirts of enemy territory in Winnipeg, Manitoba, alongside Brandon Pillar up in the Blue Mountains. And do you like prospects? Do you like getting mad at lists? Oh, then do we ever have a great show coming up for you today? Yes, Ross. Corey Promen of The Athletic released his 2022 Pipeline Rankings, where he ranked all 32 NHL teams based on their top players, 23 and under, and the Sens. They've got a handful of them, and you're going to like where they ended up in this ranking. We'll get into where they are, who should be higher or lower, and a whole lot more. And all of it's brought to you by Bet Online, the only place to make your online wagering a part of the Locked On Podcast family. It's Bet Online, where the game starts. And now the show starts. This is the Locked On Senators Podcast, your team every day. Locked On Senators, your daily podcast on the Ottawa Senators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Senators your first listen on this Friday, August 26th. We are free and available on all platforms, including on YouTube, where the best way you can help the show grow is to like every video by just clicking the thumbs up. Super easy. Subscribe to the video. Another one button. Super easy. And leave us a comment as well we also have a bunch plenty of youtube exclusive content being released seven days a week we take your team every day extremely seriously pilsy why don't you tee up before we get into all the prospect talk on this show of what we have on the youtube channel yeah of course at first off it's great to be back i was away in bc for a while it feels weird being back in the studio it's nice to finally be able to join you again for an episode ross but Yes, what we're doing on YouTube is we're doing our organizational value ranking. So every Tuesday and Thursday, we're going to do an entire tier of players, usually around five to 10 players of guys that are in similar categories and uh, battling for position. So yesterday. Yeah, yesterday was a bit of a longer one, over an hour. We don't know how to do short shows. So usually we do five. This was 10, to be fair. Yeah. Yeah, so my range is all right there. But yes. This is our third year doing it, and uh, if you guys liked it the first two years, you're going to love it this year. We're a little bit more polished, and we got it up on YouTube now, so enjoy those on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Yes, however, we did notice there's a bit of a glitch going when we're screen sharing. We're trying to work that out for next Tuesday. However, uh, we'll talk about it on Tuesday when we do the next tier, but uh, we are aware of a little bit of a glitch just on the screen share. It doesn't change the audio or anything else, so uh, still a great way to reacquaint yourself with all 64 members of the Sens organization. And the contention already began between two prospects. We're going to save that for two seconds. I just want to also let everyone know that starting this weekend, every Saturday and Sunday, we're going to have an extra video. Yes, five days a week wasn't enough. We just thought it would be fun to put some other Senators content creators, give them a platform, and discuss how they decided to get into the content creating game and where they see the Senators going. So this weekend, we've got two great conversations, one coming up with Jack Richardson and our boy, Laleem's Martian. We had to get him in the mix there. We've got a fun draft coming up with Martian. And then next weekend, we're going to have Sens prospects and Sens talk. So uh, we're going to continue that every weekend for the next month or so. Uh, Just again, just a little extra, something fun and something that we can, you know, help build this community because that's what sports are all about at the end of the day. But sports are also about arguing, Pilsy. And that's what you and I did when we were putting our uh, prospect list together yesterday. Philip Nordberg versus Tomas Hamara. And I don't want to seem like a Hamara hater and you probably don't want to seem like a Nordberg hater. No. But we had quite the lopsided poll on Twitter (laughs) at Sense Central. Yeah, we did. And I mean, like you mentioned, there, there's a lot of points for your argument. Uh, I'm on the Thomas Amara side just because I, I liked his scouting reports and it felt like the general consensus was he was ranked much higher than Nordberg. So from the little information we know about both of these guys, that's where I tend to lean. And Hamara already has pro experience over in Liga, whereas uh, Nordberg was playing in the J20 in Sweden. I know different different leagues, different countries, different comparables. But the thing is... For me, right now, Thomas Hamara holds more value. And for 86.9% of the 857 people that voted, 
they agreed, but Ross made good point. <laughs> really? how, how much this, and is if you're listening uh, in your car, his next point is follow this up with how many minutes have you watched Philip Norberg play? <laughs> zero, less than five minutes, more than five minutes. Zero was the major uh, contender there, which I'm- 83%, I'm, almost as high as the people that voted for, for Amara. Exactly. So, but in fairness, all you asked is who do you think carries more for value? Sure. The people sure. answered honestly, but yeah. yes- now I'll let you have your little ray of sunshine, Ross, though, because Nordberg did pop off recently. Yeah, I mean, when you just see him, and again, I don't think there's more than five minutes available of highlights. Of I certainly Nordberg. haven't watched more than five minutes. I'll be totally honest. No, <laughs> so, me neither. I've watched less than yeah. five, but at this point, it's just kind of trusting Trent Mann to an extent. But also, when you see him out on the ice in the few clips I did watch, he is a mammoth of a man, but skates very well. So anyways... Kind of an undercover prospect that I'm going to be following along. Maybe bring him into my family with the Tyler Clevins, the Angus Crookshanks, the Ridley Greggs, the world. Ross, th- this year we should do... Igor, a- Igor. Can't, can't forget Igor. He's part of my family too. We got to do... We'll do a family tree draft before. Yes. So we eat, everyone knows who our sons are going into yes. the season. That's definitely a content idea for uh, down the road. I love it. I love it. We have plenty <laughs> of great content coming up. Some phenomenal interviews uh, on deck starting on Monday. I think we can tease this one. The people oh. wanted it. The people will get it. Here we go. Volume of thought, send central crossover coming next week. Likely Monday. We'll figure it out exactly, but very excited to have uh, Wally and Math join the show. We're going to do kind of a season preview. And uh, they said it's going to be a bit of a gong show, you know, having four guys on a Zoom call. And then they go out and they have uh, Boosh and, <laughs> and Jake Sanderson. So now that was their test run of having yes. four guys on one show. So we're excited to have uh, those two on next week. And those aren't the big interviews that Pillsy was teasing yesterday, but we'll leave those as a surprise as long as we can. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm, wait, just before you move on though, I'm really excited about this. Like you mentioned, the fans have been asking for this. We've kind of mentioned it and kind of hemmed and hawed and hinted at it for a while. And it's finally happening. I mean, we've had Brent Wallace on the show a couple times, obviously great chatting with him, but this will be our first time to be able to chat with uh, Mark the thought, which will be really fun too, especially having both of them together. And uh, yeah, that's going to be a fun chat that you're not going to want to miss out. Finally, the crossover episode is happening. 100%. So very, very excited to have that happen next week. All right, why don't we do this backwards? Because we want to get to Corey Promen, but we also have a couple other quick notes that we want to get to. So let's hit on those right now. Can we get some stick taps for an absolute Ottawa legend? Brooke Ooh, Henderson, yes. if you're watching on YouTube, Brooke Henderson Wearing the Sens black 2D jersey for her, uh, what was it, practice round, I guess? Because the tournament starts today. It's the uh, the Canadian Open. They're playing in Ottawa. At the, I believe it's at the Hunt Club. Uh, but I could be mistaken there. However, she looks phenomenal. Look good, feel good, play good. Like, I am, I'm going to bet online and I'm hammering Brooke Henderson to win yes. this weekend. There's yeah. No, she already won it in 2018. She is going to be if not first, she's going to be top three finish this weekend. No doubt. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a golf guy, so so I don't really follow along. But when I see something like this pop off, I definitely like that. Talk about looking good on the greens, Brooke Henderson. So definitely big shout out to her. And yeah, I'll I'll throw a couple shekels in uh, in there as well at BetOnline.ag Ross because she's got to be she's got she's got it in the bag when you look yeah. that good. Brooks Brigade is what her fan base is called. They're absolute nice. animals. Smith Falls, finest Brooke Henderson. Yes. Last thing on this. She's wearing number 67 on this jersey. Is that a shot at the Toronto Maple Leafs? No, I, I would love to say it is because that would be <laughs> master trolling. But I think it's more uh, Ottawa Capital City 67 Confederation uh, year. Uh, That's my guess. 1867? Shh. Her grandparents were, were probably not. Yeah, are we talking about 1867 or 1967 here? Or 1767? Who knows what was going on back then? <laughs> <laughs> All right, great stuff. Uh, let's hit a quick ad, and then we've got a great breakdown to get to the pipeline rankings coming up. Where did the Senators finish on Corey Prodman's 2022? He calls them prospect rankings, pipeline rankings. But what I love is that he's not just putting the guys who haven't made the NHL. This is everyone under the age of 23. Pilsy, the age of 23 as of September 15th, 
Brady Kachuk turns 23 on September 16th. So Brady Kachuk oh. is still eligible <laughs> for this. And it, it does make sense to have that cutoff date because it is the date that the draft calendar turned. So it's everyone drafted in 2018 and beyond. The Pipeline Rankings next after Pilsy has a quick word from one of our favorite sponsors. Yeah, Ross, I'm actually heading to our sponsor's website right now, betonline.ag. So bear with me while I try to find those odds for uh, for Brooke Henderson here, or maybe Ross, while I'm uh, doing the ad read, you can quickly do that. But the reason we're talking about betonline.ag, they are the trusted online sportsbook of the Locked On Podcast Network and the Locked On Senators Podcast. This episode was brought to you by betonline.ag, so we love them for sure. But it's not just hockey and golf, guys. Football season is around the corner. NFL, I get super pumped for that. Fancy leagues, doing uh, a daily betting every Sunday, get your bets in. And the best way to do that is betonline.ig. But don't forget about baseball. They're gear- gearing up for the playoffs. Can the Jays make it? Hopefully. Um, basketball is coming up as well. They got UFC, boxing, whatever you want. They got it at betonline.net. And it's the best spot to find all your latest odds, totals, player performance props, even where the next fired coach is going to land. Like I said, it's betonline.net is the number one spot for all your sports betting needs. Ross, do we have confirmation on the numbers? No, I need to reach out to our friends at betonline.ag. They're going to get that on there. But right now, just on the LPGA's website, Brooke Henderson is the favorite to win Ooh. the CP Women's Open. Eight to one odds. So I got it. I'm gonna reach out to Bet Online right now. We're recording this on Thursday midday. So hopefully by the time you're listening to this, you'll be able to go to betonline.ag and get those LPGA odds for Brooke Henderson. But Bet Online, they've got all your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. It's betonline.net where the game starts. All right, Pilsy, so it's pipeline ranking time. Stay tuned because I think a little closer to training camp, we're going to do our updated top 10 prospects in the Senators organization. And I already teased that Sense Prospects is going to come on for a behind-the-blog feature on the weekend, not this weekend, but next. We're going to do a prospect pyramid with him. So that's where you've got your tiers, pretty much like we're doing for the value rankings, but we're pretty much going to leave it up to him. I want to know what his tiers are because ours are pretty much set with the value rankings, more or less. I'm curious to see what Sense Prospects has to say about that. A must follow on Twitter Absolutely. and Instagram everywhere that you get your Senators news. And we wouldn't have seen that Nordberg goal if it weren't for our friend, yep. Henry, at Sense Prospects. Uh, we invited Corey Pronman to join us today. Unfortunately, he was traveling, so the timing didn't work out. But uh, we would have absolutely loved to have him on because, well, he has the Senators fifth in the National Hockey League for Pipeline under the age of 23. Were you ready to get mad at that spot, or is that pretty fair? No, that's pretty fair. And the reason, uh, Ross, you and I were chatting uh, before trying to guess where we thought the Sens were, and I had them a lot higher because I I was sure that Brady Kachuk would not be a part of this list. But like you mentioned, very, very close to the cutoff end. When you can add a captain of a team, an absolute leader, and a face of a franchise onto any list, that's going to boost you up a couple spots. So glad to see Brady there. And this list is is all about the big hitters, right? Like the top five teams, um, the top five teams, all their players that boost them to that are usually top five picks and guys that are in the NHL already. As I'm loading it here, Buffalo was the number one team. Detroit was the number two team. New Jersey Devils, the number three team, and Anaheim Ducks, number four, with your Ottawa Senators coming in at number five. And when you start thinking about the guys they have, especially like the Ducks, Red Wings, all the guys that have graduated and are already playing in the NHL at uh, at a high level, the Sabres too, it makes sense that those teams are ahead of Ottawa. So I wasn't mad at that. And I thought Ottawa deserved to be ahead of most of the teams that they were within a couple spots of uh, in the top 10. So overall, I think it was a fair ranking. Like I'm, I'm not really mad at anything. So if you, if you're watching on YouTube, I just pulled up here, the one through 11 Arizona sneaks in there uh, at 11, but really the top 10, it goes Buffalo, Detroit, New Jersey, Anaheim, Ottawa, Carolina, Montreal, Minnesota, the Rangers, the Kings, and then again, the Coyotes. He did all 32 teams. I love that he didn't do one every day, you know, draw it out too long. 
eight per day. Let's get it all out in one week. And they're tremendously well done breakdowns, I thought, of every single team. Now, there's a couple of interesting factors at play. Ottawa finished third on this same project last year. However, they graduated Eric Brandstrom, Alex Formanton, and oh yeah, Josh Norris, which makes sense then that they fell down two spots, whereas they didn't draft until 64th overall this year either. So I'm of the mind that five is a pretty fair spot, but I think the biggest argument or debate that we can have, and I'm curious to get your opinion on this without giving away our organizational value rankings top of the chart, but in 2021, Corey Promen had Tim Stutzla at one and Brady Kachuk at two. And now this year, it's flipped. He has Brady Kachuk at one and Tim Stutzla at two. How do you handicap those two head-to-head? Such different players, I know. Definitely. I think right now you've got to give the edge to Brady, right? Because he's already proven that he can get it done in the NHL up against other teams' top lines. Like, he... He is the dude for the Ottawa Senators. Whereas Tim Slitzel, not not downplaying what he did, 58 points last year was pretty damn impressive. And he had some really hot streaks and was also a big part of the offense. But no one on the Sens does what Brady does, and especially to do it under the age of 23. I think it's fair that he's the top guy. Like hitting, I'm so glad Brady hit 30 goals. Like that 29 goals just doesn't sit right. No. Eh? Like you need to have that 30. We, we call and that, that's why. We, we call that the Mike Hoffman. He finished, I think, with the Sens with 29, 28, and 26 in different years. Yeah. So not being able to put 30 goal score in front of your name is, uh, it changes things. So Brady definitely deserves to be number one. Do you think I was right? Let's see. Yeah. With Ottawa, Hoffman, 27, 29, 26, 22. Oof. So, and then he went to Florida and hit 36. Yeah, that'll And happen. then he went to Montreal and got 15. I <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but in all seriousness, Brady was just as excited, if not more, as you getting to that 30 milestone, eh? They were feeding him. Yes, the yeah, it was hilarious. Ever, Brady was in the Josh Norris spot on the power play <laughs> in, in game 82. <laughs> yeah, it had Josh to happen, was like, and it did. Just stand here. This is a pretty good spot to score goals. Yeah, yeah. All, all you do is stand here and you just score. Like it's easy, Brady. So good, man. So I, I'm I. I don't want to ruin it, but again, contracts like other things come into play for our value rankings. But yes. right now. I lean Brady, but this, again, this could flip flop by the end of next year. Like they are, they're that close and they're just such different players. I just think again, like Brady, even though he's only eligible by one day in terms (laughs) of his birth year, the fact that he's still on this list, this type of list, a lot of people said like um, maybe a lower ceiling on on the type of player. Like, yeah, he'd play right away as a 19 year old and, and all that, but I don't think he's done growing like physically maybe but in terms of what his overall game is going to be i still think he can become a better skater and if he does that imagine he adds like being able to attack on the rush to his to his uh calling card all of a sudden you're looking like a six tool player a guy who brings absolutely everything so i think that uh it's a bit of semantics debating who's at the top here whether it's uh, brady kachuk or whether you decide to go with uh tim stutzla but I think you lean with the older player here of the two. So I agree with uh, with um, with Corey Prom and that he put Brady there. He's got Brady's compete as elite, and it's <laughs> very tough to get Corey to put elite for guys. Like he always does. Like NHL average to him is impressive when he yep. does this, and then he goes uh, above NHL average. Then he goes high end, and then elite. It's like the top, top of the top. So um, I, I like that. Who was the one guy, whether it was uh, a, a bit higher or a bit lower? Where who, who are you a little surprised with where they landed in terms of the Sens prospect? Should we run through them real quick just so everyone gets a sense of uh, of what the order is? Yeah, yeah, let's let's do that, yeah. Okay, and then while I'm saying it, you can kind of have the, the yep. wheels turning in your head about who's higher or who's too low. So I mentioned Brady Kachuk, number one, and I'll put the tier that he has them in. So Brady Kachuk is a bubble elite NHL player slash NHL all-star. Tim Stutzla, NHL All-Star. Jake Sanderson, top of the lineup player. Shane Pinto, bubble top of the lineup player. Number five, Ridley Gregg, middle of the lineup player. Igor Sokolov at six, middle of the lineup player. Seven, Zach Ostapchuk as a projected to play NHL games, which are, are the next few. Roby Yarventy at eight, 
Tyler Clevin at 9. Mad Sogard at 10. Lassie Thompson at 11. Tomas Hamara at 12. <laughs> Tyler Boucher at 13. JBD at 14. And then he's got a few alphabetically that has a chance to play beyond that, where he's got Angus Crookshank, Jorian Donovan, Max Gannett, Levy Marilinen, Philip Nordberg, and Ben Rogers. So who was it for you that was either too high or too low? I mean, again, don't take this as hating these players, but I was kind of surprised he had Tyler Clevin so high. I, I probably would have swapped uh, Clevin and uh, Lassie Thompson. I mean, you're, we're talking about two spots difference here, so it's really uh, nitpicking. But yeah, I think I would have moved uh, Lassie Thompson up a little bit more just because where he's at right now and what he's proven already. And he's still really young himself, Lassie. So I think there's room to grow there. But uh I did note that Thomas Hamara was uh, was on that list, whereas Philip Norberg was on the outside looking in. Just want to just want to throw that out there. Yeah, well, that's Corey Pronman's opinion. However, <laughs> I don't think even Corey Pronman has seen him play more than five minutes. Yeah, I mean, yeah, who, who knows? I, I said it on our tiered list <laughs> yesterday. He is legitimately taking over the spot of Artem Zub as the mythical creature. Yeah, he really is. Nobody knows who he is outside. And uh, I think it was our boy Caleb, Send Central Citizen. He, he mentioned, he's like, I don't know anything about Norberg outside of the, the shirtless pick that he's absolutely jacked. <laughs> I mean, there's worse things to be known for. So that's <laughs> that's all right if you're Philip. Yeah, fair enough. But I, I'm super excited to see, see Nordberg. So I, I would say for me, like, yeah, I'm not going to nitpick Nordberg. But can we get a little respect on our boy Crooker? Yeah, I mean... It, it, at least he was mentioned here. That's good because I feel like, again, a lot of people forgot about him in a lost year. And mm -hmm. that's the thing. Small sample size in Belleville, play, playing at the University of New Hampshire. Not yeah. not amazing numbers, but like decent Well, he numbers. mentioned here, he, he said he's highly skilled in intelligence. So I yeah. appreciate him for acknowledging that. But he says he's not the biggest or fastest. And although I, I think speed's actually one of his assets, so maybe I disagree with that a little bit. However, he said the latter will be something to monitor following major knee surgery. So that's fair. From the outside to be like, hey, I already thought like speed wasn't his number one thing, and now he's got a blown up knee, as we called it. Um, so I'll, I'll say that. I also think, man, I'm not going to get into the whole discourse again. I, I just want to let it play out. But I, Boucher was 11th on his list last year. I would have liked to, to see him stay at 11. I don't know. Like Hamara, he played decent at the world juniors. Like everyone's ready to call him the next coming. Like, I, I like him. No. He had one assist in seven games. Like he played 20 minutes a night for Czechia. Yeah. Like, it's not like he's going up against guys who are, you know, top, top, top uh, prospects outside of, I guess, you uh, who's a right shot defenseman. He's lefty, but I would probably have Boucher ahead of Hamara still at this stage Agreed. of the development curve. So, yep. um, I think, yeah, he, he could even be 12 or 10. And yeah, I love the K train, but for me, he's probably like 11 or 12. I'd have him. Yeah. I was a little surprised more so that Clevin was ahead of Lassie and JBD. Like, yeah, JBD was fairly low on this list. That's the thing. Like, uh, like Lassie and JBD need to be ahead of Hamara, in my opinion, and Clevin for that matter. Yeah. And Promen says for JBD, he looks like a useful depth defenseman as opposed to an everyday guy. I think that, again, and you have to remember that guys like Corey Promen, they do it for all 32 teams. And we respect yeah, their yeah. hard work, but they, I think that you always have to, and that's what the Locked On Podcast Network is so good for. Mm -hmm. It's guys who are locked on to one team. So we've got a little bit more of an intimate knowledge. And I think that from the outside, yeah, you're not always going to be impressed with JBD, yeah. but it's how unimpressive he is that is impressive. Because he's never making the wrong reads. he's Everything is just calm with his game. So I think that from the outside, it's easy to be like, oh, he's nothing. But when you watch him every day and just how he makes his partner better, that's where his value is going to come in at the NHL level. I don't know if this is the year he's ready to make the jump, but I will say that it's a bit of a, a slap. But at the same time, 2018 pick. So again, that's the, yeah. the furthest back this ranking goes. So the new shiny toys, it's almost like, what is that? That Toy Story meme where it's like he's throwing out the old a yeah. toy, ver verbal meme he's throwing out and he's got the new one. Or verbal meme, guys looking back at the hot girl walking by and his girlfriend's like, what? It's like 2018 draft pick, ooh, 2022 draft pick behind, right? So there is that kind of recency bias where Tomas Amara is at number 12. 
Yeah, and hey, LOSP memes. Ross just gave you two two content ideas there. So if you're listening, you you got some homework to do. Yeah, but uh, none better yeah. than this though, and I'll take credit for myself. Yeah, I've got that on the quick trigger. Yeah, that that is an all time meme for sure. Thank yeah, you. that I that one lives it. on forever. I love that. Um, Pillsy's face when he sees it for the first time. <laughs> Definitely, I, I did. I did really enjoy that, Ross. So full full credit. So to I'm glad you. I'm glad that in a roundabout way there Ridley Gregg's face was brought up because right after another quick break I want to ask you your thoughts on Ridley Gregg being behind Shane Pinto on this list but first it's a very important message so here's the situation you're hanging out with your friends having a few drinks a few built bars and a few drinks great combo uh but a few turn into a few too many and as the evening comes to a close Everyone starts to look around. All right, it's time to go home. You think about calling for a ride, but you're like, okay, I just live down the street. I can make it home okay. It's not a big deal. What are the odds you'll get pulled over? What's the worst that can happen? Everyone knows the risks of drunk driving. The results are tragic and often deadly. However, it still doesn't stop anyone from everyone from getting behind the wheel while under the influence. And that's why police officers are out there on the streets right now looking for impaired drivers on our roads. They're doing it for one reason. It's to save lives. So if you think you're okay to drive after a few drinks, think again. Play it safe. We want you to have a few drinks. Have a good time. But then just call a ride. It's so easy. Uber is literally an app on your phone. Bingo, bango, bongo. Three clicks and you got a ride. So don't drive drunk. Drive sober or get pulled over. All right, Pilsy. Back to the pipeline rankings. The Ottawa Senators. And coming in at number four is Shane Pinto. At five is Ridley Gregg. I know that the gap is tightened. There's no denying that. Yeah. But is Shane Pinto still ahead of Ridley Gregg in your estimation? Yes, I would still have Pinto ahead of Gregg. Just because, again, we're, we're talking about a guy that basically had a lost year. Like, remember, think back to the days when Shane Pinto was playing for your Ottawa Senators at the end of that season and how much better this team was with him than without him. And think of how good he could be if he had that full season. So I just think, and, and the fact that Shane Pinto, like this guy is a center. And no no knock on Ridley Gregg, but I kind of view him more as a winger when he comes up to the NHL. That's probably a better spot for him. Whereas Shane Pinto, with some time, with some work, with some practice up against uh, experienced, stronger guys in the faceoff dot, he could end up being a real kind of specialist player that'll get the job done in key faceoffs, which a lot of teams put some big value on. And hey, having a guy like Claude Giroux now to help him out, that's a massive, massive uh, thing, a mentor for Shane Pinto. So as of now, I got Pinto ahead of Greg, yes. Okay, I- I'm of the same mind. And I just love the defensive acumen that Shane Pinto will bring. I think when he's at his final evolution, he's going to be a great faceoff man at the NHL level. And I think what's underrated in all this is the size that he brings as well. He's like six threes. He's a big, big kid. Whereas Ridley, uh, I was just listening to Wally Mathot and they said that Ridley's drinking four protein shakes a day, trying to bulk up. He's just (laughs) one of those guys that has trouble, you know, putting on weight. So right now he's sitting at like 165, 170 pounds and just the style that he plays. I think it's going to be tough for him to do at the NHL level unless he is able to put on 15, 20 pounds over the next year or two. So I'm with you. I still have uh, Shane Pinto ahead of where I have Ridley Gregg, but certainly it's a lot closer than over the last couple of years. Absolutely, yeah. And I'm so glad that uh, it sucks that Greg got injured, but I'm so glad he got to have his coming out party so that all the non-Ottawa fans can can understand that what Sens fans have been clamoring about and the praise we have for Ridley Gregg is justified and validated because He's not just a guy that goes out there and gets 10 penalty minutes and is stuck on the bench. He has hands. He has hockey IQ. He can play with uh, skilled players. He can set them up. He can uh, pick up on rebounds. He plays an edgy game. He draws penalties. All these kinds of things that maybe analytically they don't shine through. But when you know the game of hockey and you know how uh, how kind of integrated his style of game actually is and how important it is, especially come playoffs when you're playing the same team for seven games and you get a guy like Ridley Gregg agitating you and scoring on you at the same time, people don't like that. So Ridley Gregg has a lot more value than I think the rest uh, of the NHL team fan bases understand. And now 
with Team Canada on a big stage, he showed it. Yeah, so I'm reading the comments on this article. Some of them are so funny. Someone goes, oh, yes, the four years in the league and two-time All-Star prospect, Kachuk. It's like, you just read the description and, and you got it all figured out. But uh, last thing I want to ask you about uh, this this rundown in its entirety is next year when they do it, who is going to make the biggest leap? Not who you think should have been higher this year, but projecting to next year, who is going to make the biggest leap? Probably Jake Sanderson from three to one, right? Or no, it won't <laughs> be one yet. It won't be one yet because Timmy will still Timmy's be involved. Timmy's got to be one. Timmy's mm. got to be one next year. You know what? I'll, I'll go uh, I'll staff Chuck. I think, man, talking about a, a guy that, this popped, that popped off at the World Juniors, I think with some graduations and uh, if he has another big year, that's going to be a draft pick that uh, a lot of people liked when the Sens took it, but I think that it's going to hold a lot more value because like like our friend Liam's Martian said, when he's out there, he is giving 110% and he is a pain in the ass to play against. Like he's hounding loose pucks. He's fighting those uh, corner battles. He's just uh, relentless out there. So if a stop chuck can keep that up this year in the WHL, look out. I am, as we speak, I just emailed Jimmy from Bet Online, and we are working to get Brooke Henderson odds Perfect. on Yes. The, the bet online sports book because Brooke is officially teed off at the CP women's open, not wearing a Sens Jersey, but you know, she's carrying it in spirit there. So I just wanted to get that in there. I like where your head's at. You know, I got to go with my two sons though. You know, you know, I have to, and no, it's not crooker. Cause he's going to be aged out of this next year. I think we see Tyler Boucher in the top 10. So I see him moving up four spots and I know there's two. Okay. Yeah. There's going to be, Two graduates, because Igor is going to graduate as well. He's yes. 22 years old. So Igor and Brady are going to graduate. That pushes everyone up two spots. That pushes up Boosh to 11. I say he's going to be at least top 10 next year. And Philip Norberg will make <laughs> Beyond has a chance to play. Philip Norberg will next year. All right, Pilsy, why don't you tee up what's coming up next week? What do we? I can't keep track of it all, Ross. Honestly, we've got um, <laughs> a ball hockey hall of fame yes. coming on as our Sen Central Finally. citizen. I think we can tease our Friday interview as well. Again, not the two that we're we're saving in our back pocket. Kevin Mandelazy will join us yes. next Friday, and then we got the Wham Boys on Monday. So another packed week, and then our organizational value rankings will be tiers four and three next week, and then. The following week, that's that's the bread and butter right there. So our next tier is NHL players. Guys who are already in the NHL and have carved out a career. They've made a living in the NHL. Not guys who are up and down, but NHLers. Then we're going with very good prospects and good NHLers. Like, real good. Ooh. Then the final tier, elite. Elite. The elite players. You could, you could probably have a guess at who those players are. There's eight of them, right, Ross? Eight. We have okay, made it so. eight. We had it seven, and we're like, no, no, no. Yeah, it's we, an insult to have eight outside of the top tier. We needed to change that. Yeah. So, so start thinking who you think those eight elite players are going to be. And go ahead. Oh, I need to okay. give a shout out though after. Okay. Well, no. If I'll let you find your shout out, but there's a topic we we need to hit. Oh, give the shout out now, then, and we'll end off with my topic. So, Ali Des. He's, he's a great commenter, watches on YouTube. I really appreciate what he's doing on the organizational value rankings. He's leaving a comment on each one saying who he would keep or cut from each tier. So Ooh. I love that idea. So way to go, Ali. I like the interaction. That's awesome. We appreciate you. And we actually, we want to, while we're here, appreciate everyone for taking the time to not only watch, but comment and interact with us on social media. I'm getting probably five to 10 DMs a day asking when tickets are going on sale for the home opener. I promise, you know me, I have trouble keeping things in. <laughs> the millisecond that I receive yes. it, you will know when we get those tickets. So stay tuned for that. All right, Philzy, what are we wrapping the show up with? The Ottawa Senators have a new ECHL team affiliate. Yay! Woo! You gotta love it. It is the Allen Americans. Now, it, the irony of having the Americans as your team when you're the Ottawa Senators, uh, the capital of Canada, is pretty funny. But... This is a big deal. Like they, uh, it's good to have an ECHL team, and we talked about this when we're talking about the goalies, Ross. And uh, I found a little, a little connection here. Mm -hmm. So remember when we were talking about goalies in our organizational value rankings? Antoine yeah. Bebo was a guy. We're like, okay, he's a veteran okay. guy. Where's he gonna go? 
Guess where he played in the ECHL last no year? No way. Or Allen American. So last year? Yeah. So that would be a, a nice, uh, a nice little there connection there. Yeah, he might be there there this year. So that's a nice little relationship. And Pierre Dorian, he loves winners. The Allen Americans have won the Kelly Cup twice in their existence, and not only twice, Ross. How about back to back years, 2015 oh. and 2016 Kelly Cup champions? So Allen that's Americans. Insane. Welcome to the family. Welcome to the Sens family. And uh, I did a little research on Allen, the city, Ross. It is 20 minutes north of Dallas, Texas. And population... Are going on a scouting trip to Texas? Hey, it, it could be worth it. Yeah, maybe see the Sens uh, in Dallas as well. That would, that would be fun. It's uh, a town of 100,000 people. So, or I should say a city. That's a city, not a town. Uh, so hopefully they can sell out some games. And when they've had success in the past... They did get bounced from the first round of the playoffs last year, but that's okay. Bigger, better things, and uh, maybe Antoine Bebo can lead them to another Kelly Cup. <laughs> bigger, better. Everything's bigger in Texas. Yeah, basically. love it. Love it. Um, people also ask, is Allen, Texas a nice place to live? It's one of the best places to live in Texas. It offers wow. residents a dense suburban feel, and most residents own their own home. In Allen, Ooh. there are a lot of coffee shops and parks. What is Allen, Texas most famous Ross for? Love coffee. Love coffee. What's Allen most famous for? Its most recognizable landmark is the Old Stone Dam, built oh, in yes. 1874 and used as a steam locomotive watering station by the Houston and Texas Railroad. You can explore the dam by way of the Allen State Park, located on Cedar Drive and Exchange. We got to see that dam. Parkway. Last one. People also ask, how safe is Allen, Texas? Oh, okay. Allen is continuously featured in national rankings of safety, affordability, education, and quality of life, including an A-plus overall grade. Woo. It's among the 50 safest cities in Texas. It's actually, here we go, <laughs> a year earlier, the second safest city in the state of Texas. So congratulations to Allen, okay. Texas. I, I'm glad you cleared that up because being top 50 safest cities in one state, I mean... Really stretching. bigger there though. There's lots. <laughs> yeah, fair. Really stretching things here, but number two is great. All right, so that's a little quick introduction. Maybe we'll have their play-by-play guy on or something when. Uh, when yeah, yeah. We, we need some movie. Alan uh, influence in this show. Yes, absolutely. We should have worn cowboy hats. I actually have one from the Stampede years ago, so I should have yeah. put that on for Texas. Missed opportunity. I won't bore you with that now. However, I will mention it's only a one-year deal. Yes, which is interesting because as was their deal with the Atlanta Gladiators and that timed out. So interesting how the one-year deals are happening. But I mean, with the ECHL and the cap being at a weird spot and the economy being weird, it, it's hard to make certain commitments, I guess. So that's why that's happening. We are going to end off this show with a little trivia, Pilsy. I know you love when I give you some trivia. All right. How many kilometers... Is it to get from Allen, Texas to Belleville, Ontario? I'm going to go 4,173. Come on, dude. I'll give you another chance. Or sorry, what did you say? 4,173 kilometers. As I quickly try to turn miles into kilometers. No, it's actually closer. 3,365. No, it's 2,000, basically 2,500 kilometers. And what a beautiful I drive. What a beautiful drive. Oh, man. <laughs> Look at this. You got to go through the heartland of the United States of America. Okay, I didn't think go. I would ever have a map up from Texas to Oh, Belgium. Alan's more north Texas than I thought. I thought it'd be a little, a little farther down. Okay. Yeah, yeah, because you got like San Antonio, Austin, it's all there. But Fort Worth, that's where Dallas is, right? So you go through Arkansas, you go through okay. Memphis, you go through Nashville, Louisville, Cincinnati, up through Detroit, take that Port Huron, Sarnia Bridge, and then head on up past Toronto. Just plug your nose as you go past the heart of enemy territory and then head on up the 401 to Belleville, Ontario. We'll see how many guys actually nice. make that drive today, but I think that's a fun way to finish a Friday show, no? Absolutely, yeah. I, I mean, geez, my my kilometer uh, range was a little off there, but I, I love driving, so I'll do 4,000K. Bring it on. 
Yeah, no doubt. Awesome. Have a great weekend, everyone. Thank you so much for making us your first listen every day. We appreciate you. And while you're here, please head to the YouTube channel and subscribe. It goes a long way for us as we head in to season four of the Locked On Sends podcast. It's been a very fun ride, and we're only just getting started. Plenty more to come, but for today, we say goodbye. For Brandon Piller, I'm Ross Levitan. This has been the Locked On Senators podcast, your team every day. <laughs>